Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, my name is Sarah and we are a minimalist family who is living big with less. And today we are gonna to talk to you about something that is very near and dear to my heart. And that is how I fell in love with homemaking. I think that homemaking gets a bit of a bad rap nowadays. And so I want to clear up some myths about homemaking and rediscover the beautiful art of what it is. So whether it is that you love homemaking already and you just want a little dose of inspiration, or if it's that you struggle with homemaking and you want to get some ideas on how to fall in love with it, this video is for you. Guys, I think homemaking gets a little bit of a bad rap. Back in the 1950s, I think that homemaking really was in its heyday and that it was looked upon as something that was of great worth to society. Obviously, I am so happy that things have changed and that women have so many more opportunities now, but I think that in that process that some of the art of homemaking has been lost and I think that it's sort of always portrayed as this sacrifice or this slavery when in fact it actually can be this beautiful part of your life whether it's that you work outside the home or if you work inside the home either way male or female homemaking has so many positive impacts on your life and i'm going to tell you how i fell in love with it okay so the first myth that i found was that homemaking kind of was this awful thing that we get stuck with and that poor women who are stuck at home are starved of creativity. And I actually think the opposite is true. I think that your homemaking can become the ultimate creative outlet. For me, I am not particularly crafty, although I love the arts, I love theater, I love art galleries, I love all kinds of art. I am the consumer of art and I don't necessarily make a lot of it, but I do know that my home is a really good reflection of who I am. And that as I started to see ways I could creatively make things work a little bit better, things that creatively were more appealing to my aesthetic that I became really ignited with passion about making my home, I guess my piece of art, a reflection of our family. And so if you are a really creative person, I feel like that process of making your house a home is the perfect creative outlet. Number two is Homemaking allows us to make it special. I am so blessed to be surrounded by so many lovely women, whether it's my mother or my mother-in-law or just the lovely women I have around me. I have a lot of sisters and I have just come to notice that the women in the family really have this beautiful opportunity to make the home feel special. And that as I started to look at the jobs I was doing, not just folding laundry, doing dishes, but as gifts to my family and those around me, it was an absolute turning point. I remember my mother-in-law telling me that when her kids were little, my husband and his sisters were little, that she would pray over their washing as she folded it and put it in their drawer as a little piece of love. And I just think, I think about that every time I'm folding laundry, that it really is just so special to our family when we can meet them in practical ways. I know for me, Acts of service is a super high love language for me. So homemaking fits in so well with that. But just being able to reframe those things about whether it's 
cooking, which I'm not so in love with, but I know that I can get the opportunity to sit down and if I can make someone's favorite or pick something up at the grocery store that I know will bless my husband or my kids, it's such a good feeling. And I think that those things are so easy to miss that you might be doing them already, but if you're not seeing them through the lens of being special and showing love, that we ourselves don't give ourselves credit for what it truly is. And so as you start to acknowledge that in your own life, it makes it so much easier to tackle those tasks that maybe aren't our favorite because we know that we are bringing love and those beautiful feelings of feeling special and cared for, for our whole family as well as for ourselves. So the third thing I discovered on my journey to loving homemaking was that I needed to leave perfection behind. So I have talked about this so many times, but my personality is very inclined to go down a perfectionist route, that I like things to be done well, and that I'm very hard on myself, and I am definitely my own worst critic. But over the years, as I have started to let go of that perfection, I realized that I actually enjoy being in a home and doing things around my home so much more as I started to relax and just let things be. So if you are linking your homemaking, your cleaning, or your decluttering with perfection, that that can sometimes stop you from trying. So if that's you, if you are like me and seek perfection and have to keep yourself in check, I would encourage you to embrace that you know life is messy, but that we can still find enjoyment, not just in the making of the mess, but also in the cleaning up. And that over time you start to relax and that you know it doesn't become about living in a show home or having things done a certain way, that it's more about the feeling that we create in our home, that you will feel much better about the whole homemaking journey. I often say to my clients that a job done is better than a perfect job because the perfect job will never come. So if you are struggling to get started or to hold down a routine, I would really encourage you to just look at it like an experiment, try different things, find out what works, not with the goal of perfection, but just with the goal of getting it done and seeing how much you can do in a day or a week. It's just a great way to sort of cut through that perfection and start enjoying the process. Number four is making a space that you love. I am such a big advocate of making your home a reflection of you and your family, of your loves, of making your house feel like a home for you, whatever that looks like. If minimalism and a calm, clear space is your jam, do it. If having lots of things and lots of artwork and color and all of those things are your jam, definitely do that. But whatever it looks like, make it a space you love and enjoy the process of that. I think that you know, we can get into this rut of thinking of our home as this destination to be reached rather than a journey and a reflection of the ebbs and flows of life that as our kids grow up or as our needs and desires change, that our home should change with it. And that's the beautiful thing about homemaking is it is a reflection of us. It's about what we like. It's so personal. And so as I started to really just notice all the things that I really loved and own that and not feel guilty because it doesn't look like the Home and Gardens magazine, but knowing deep within myself that our home is a really functional space for my family. It is an accurate representation of who we are and your home shouldn't be about appeasing anybody else. It should be about what's right for you. Number five is your home should serve you. You don't serve your home. So if you are trying to, you know, if you're surrounded by things that aren't working, that's a good indication that maybe you are serving your home at the moment and we need our home to serve us. And so some great things that I found really helpful were 
focusing on function, what I need my home to be able to do for my family to be able to function as calmly as possible, what's gonna help us get in and out of the door, what sort of things can I put in place to make it easier for my kids? How can I design a home so that I can spend more quality time with my family? That is always a huge goal for me. And so by decluttering and keeping the house to a level that I can manage really easily was a great way to do that. But whatever that looks like for you is perfect. So some other things that I really love about homemaking is that you get to be the problem solver. You get to look at all the different aspects of how your home runs and you can find ways to make it smoother. Definitely does not mean you have to do it all on your own. You do not have to be the only cleaner, the only cook, the only one looking for this. But I find the more of these things that I do, the more my family actually jumps in and gets invested into the smooth running of our home. So whether it is making sure that your kids can access food really easily and having a look at how they you know, can find food for themselves, what snacks are available, can they help you in the kitchen, what is reasonable things that they can do for their age to help you. I think that sometimes we expect people to be able to read our minds and so as I've created a home that is serving us, that is making it easier for people to be able to help me, to be able to come alongside me and cook together or clean together or keeping my kids' rooms really simple so that's something that they can manage themselves, that that has all been part of my homemaking journey. And as my kids grow and change, so does that journey for them. And I want them to leave both my boys and my girls as homemakers, that they will be able to step into any house that they live in and make it their home, make it a reflection of themselves and make it functional so they can be the best they can be, so they're not tied down, you know, forever cleaning, but they've got more time to spend having these grand adventures. So guys, I hope that you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about my journey to homemaking. I myself have always loved cleaning right from a little girl. So if you are not a cleaning lover, I do actually understand you because I feel that way about cooking. But I've noticed since I've sort of started to really focus on the things I love about serving my family and making a lovely home that I've grown to enjoy some of the processes within cooking and you can apply this to whatever your least favorite task is that there's always those little things inside it whether it's that you can cook alongside someone or clean and declutter with someone that you love and make it into a really good experience but I think that Homemaking is such a beautiful art and that if you can find a way to express your own version of that, that's the real key. I had to show you guys this dress because I have been looking for any excuse to wear it. I actually picked it up for $4 from the thrift store. It is a Zara collection dress and I love it. And the best part is it has pockets.